So many video games, so many iconic characters. How could I possibly compete with this? Well, the beauty of being a guy who's 40 is that I don't want to compete with this. At this point in the simulation that is my life, the desire to really compete with anyone other than myself is pretty much non-existent. At the end of the day, this game is a story I want to tell using characters that serve the story best. That doesn't mean that I don't want a unique aesthetic, it just means that outside factors won't really matter. The reason I stopped doing art commissions is because I would always half-ass it if it wasn't a character I actually knew or liked. First things first, this is the main character in my game, Eric. It all starts with him. If you don't like him, then why the hell would you want to spend an hour or more with him? I've been asked if he's based on me in high school, and the answer is that he's based on the person I wanted to be in high school, but is more closely associated with the mid to late 20s version of me, minus the ego and narcissism. The character design actually evolved, or I suppose de-evolved, from another art piece I did. During the pandemic, I created a pixel art piece for Austin Public Health to promote the COVID-19 vaccine. Specifically, it was targeted at younger people with the message being that we needed to protect our older and more vulnerable population, which is something that people still seem to have a problem with, but I'll digress since that's a whole other thing that doesn't need my two cents. Since the image of what the COVID-19 virus looked like was pretty well known at that point, I decided to use that imagery as a basis for what would become this Final Fantasy RPG inspired piece. I'm pretty proud of this one since it was used for a really good cause and it was really fun to just create brand new characters and tell a very simple story. While I love the character designs on this one, in the context of the game I wanted to make, it was just a bit too much. For both aesthetics and ease of game development, I had to simplify. First off, the face had to go. I'd like to take his, his face off. In the hierarchy of this game development, it goes story, sound design, music, and visuals. That doesn't mean that I'm half-assing the look of this game by any means, but more so taking stock in where I want to devote my energies. Luckily, I think I struck a good balance with the character designs being both simple as well as being individually unique. So this turned into this. To complete the 90s vibe, I replaced the Daft Punk shirt with the Pearl Jam shirt. Side note, this Pearl Jam t-shirt is a shirt I always wanted as a teenager, but being isolated in West Texas, I didn't really have a way to get it. I have it now though, so all is good. You can't relive your youth, but you can buy it back piece by piece. Once I had this guy created, it was time to craft the cast of characters you interact with, which meant hopping back into the DeLorean called Google and setting the dial to the 90s. All the classic standbys are there. You got the starter jackets, the Jinko jeans, and the girls inspired by Clueless and Empire Records. Yeah, it's cool to shit on the stuff worn in the 90s, but digging deep, the wide array of styles and choices people made is actually really cool. We can all cringe now, but lots of us would have killed to rock some Jinkos back in the day. We were just dumb kids who constantly had advertising bombarding us and lived in small bubbles where we created weird hierarchies and tribes amongst ourselves. It was part of the process of growing up in that time, and one I don't think we quite appreciate enough, so when you look back at the younger you, don't cringe. Give that kid props for trying to find their way. This game is a love letter to my formative years, and a weird side product of researching this slice of time is that a part of me is residing in the past, and with that comes a weird cocktail of sadness and clarity. Most of the characters in this game are based on people I actually know. Some are current friends that I retrofitted for the era, and others are people I actually went to school with or knew in my younger days. Of all of my high school friends, I only maintained regular contact with one, and truth be told, we weren't even really friends in high school. We only got close after we escaped that bubble and let ourselves start down the path to who we really were. When you start actively thinking about people you haven't thought about in years, there comes this moment where you jar loose memories that you didn't even know were still there. I don't know if this is just me, but when you do that, there comes this poignant mix of happiness and a little resentment because you ultimately wonder if the moments that meant so much to you are even a vague memory to them. I made a very middling short film years ago, but there was one line in it that pretty much sums up how I learned to cope with this. You can't be afraid to give back more than you get in this life. Their small moments aren't yours no more than yours or theirs. In fact, sometimes it's better to just have that moment be yours because at the end of the day, those small moments, they live and die with you. With that knowledge, I was able to shift back to a better place and settle into that old cliche of don't be sad because it's over, but be happy because it happened. Is this a lot of subtext to throw into a simple video game? Most definitely, but I think what keeps me going when I get frustrated or stuck is that while it might seem like I'm just making a game, I'm also making an acknowledgement and thanks to those people I met along the way. Just because so many people are no longer my friends, it doesn't change the fact that at one time, they were. At the time, I wasn't wise nor open enough to recognize and communicate it, and even though I may be speaking into a void, I'm at least speaking it. 
So, how did this go from character design to a deconstruction on how I view past relationships? Well, it's because every character I create represents someone real, and I think that's important for the story. You should care about your characters. While there is a main character, the others should have enough depth in them to be the main character in their own stories. One of the coolest things is when you're watching a movie or show and see a side character and think, I'd watch an entire movie about that person. One of the more time consuming parts of this game isn't just designing and illustrating all these characters, but also including the backstory of them and their relationship to the main character, no matter how simple or complex that may be. I want to thank you for watching this devlog about how I'm approaching character design in Friday Night 1998, an indie game I'm solo developing with no prior game dev experience in the least. You can follow me on all these socials I'm required to maintain to promote this game, visit my website to see some art or buy some sweet sweet merch, or just keep watching for more vids on me figuring out my way. Stay safe out there, be kind, rewind, and I'll see you next time.